Hey guys, welcome back to another video where we are going to look at Agile Point NX Connector for Azure Service Bus. Azure Service Bus is a cloud-based enterprise message broker. It is used for transferring messages between apps, devices and services which comes in handy in a distributed system scenario where the two systems might not have direct connectivity to each other. Let's look at this connector in action. So I'm in my demo environment right now. Now before we configure any of the process activities for Azure Service Bus, we need to create an access token. Now access token can be created at a global level within Managed Center which can be shared across applications or we can create an access token at an app level and restrict it to app scope. In my case, I'm going to create it at a global level. So I'm going to go to Managed Center, App Builder, Global Access Token, click on Add Token, search for Azure. You'll see there is a new token type, MS Azure Service Bus. We are going to select this one, click Next, give it a name. Now next it is asking me to give the name of an uh, service bus namespace. Now, I already have a service bus in my Azure environment over here. So I have switched back to my Azure environment. And you can see I have a service bus called APNX service bus. You see those two are listed over here. So I'm going to type it over uh, in my service bus namespace text box. So I'm going to say APNX service bus is the namespace of my service bus. Now there are two modes of authentication when it comes to service bus. I can use OAuth 2 authentication or shared access signature. So I'm going to show you the OAuth 2 uh, configuration first. It is asking me for a tenant ID, client ID and client secret ID. So I'm going to go back to Azure, go to home and I'm going to go to Azure Active Directory. Click on app registrations, new registration. I'm going to just call it demo. Now who can use this application or access this API? I'm going to say accounts in the organization's Active Directory only. So I'm going to select the first radio button. Depending on your needs, you can select any of the other ones. I'm going to click register. Now once this has been registered, you will see there is a client ID provided and also a tenant ID provided. So I'm going to copy this over. I'm going to go to back to Manage Center, paste the tenant ID. Then I'm going to copy the client ID, paste it in the client ID text box. And now it is asking me to provide a client secret ID. So I'm going to go back to Azure, go to certificates and secrets and say, add a new client secret. Give it a name, it's expiration time and click add. And it gives me back a client secret, which I'm going to copy over here and paste it. And once it has been pasted, I can say get OAuth to access token. It connects to Azure. Since I'm already logged in, it trusted the application and gave me an access token. Now I can set its renewal frequency as well. I can say renew every 15 minutes from a security perspective, every half an hour, every hour. I'm going to say every 15 minutes. Now what we can also do is we can set it for shared access signature. So if I select that, radio button, it is going to ask me for a primary connection string. The way to obtain this is you go back to your Azure environment, go to your service bus, drill down into the service bus, click on access control IAM, click on add role assignment, select the role called Azure service bus data owner. For the members, go ahead and click select member select the app which we created. So I'm going to say demo app. And once you have selected it, click on review and assign. Click on review and assign one more time. And once this is done, we are going to navigate to shared access policies. Select the policy, you can always add your custom policy. Select the policy whichever we want to use and then copy the primary connection string and put it in the text box over here. In my case, I have already created the access token. So I'm going to navigate away from this dialog. And next we are going to go to App Builder. So I'm in my App Builder right now. Here is a sample process which I have created. There have been two activities which have been added to Azure Service Bus activity group. One is send message to queue. Another one is send message to topic. So we are going to look at the configuration of both of them. Before we look at it, I'm going to explain the sample process. 
So I have a purchase order request form over here. Somebody can submit the purchase order request. It goes for manager approval. Now manager can send it back for more information, can reject it as well. But in case he approves it, I want to send a message to Azure Service Bus so that some of the underlying system can listen to that message. Now th there are two ways of doing that. I can send a message to a queue and a queue in case of Azure Service Bus is mainly used for point to point communication where, where one party is sending the message to the queue and another party is re uh, receiving it. So the way it is configured is I'm going to double click on this one. Connect to Azure Service Bus, provide your queue name. So if you go back to my Azure, you'll see within this, I have a section called queues and topics. So in under queue, there is a queue. So I'm going to provide this name. And then I have various modes of configuration. I can configure it as a message to be sent to Azure Service Bus and the message format supported are JSON, text or XML. In my case, I have selected JSON. Or if I wanted to construct a message using a name value pair, I could have done that as well. In my case, I'm going to use a JSON message. I could have rid of the whole JSON structure of a variable, but in my case, I'm going to construct it. So I provide a sample payload, which needs to be sent over to Azure Service Bus. Once I provide the sample payload, I can just click on map schema. And what it shows is based on the sample payload, it automatically figured out what is the schema of the the payload which needs to be sent to Azure Service Bus. On the left hand side, you see is the process and form fields. And on the right hand side, you see the payload uh, schema. So you can do a mapping between the two and click finish. Now similarly, I can send a message to a topic as well. Topic is used more in terms of a publisher subscriber mechanism kind of a thing where a party sends a message to a topic and there can be multiple uh, parties which are listening to that particular uh, topic as a subscriber. Other than that, the configuration remains pretty much the same. In this case, you're going to connect to Azure Service Bus, give a topic name, construct your message. Again, I have put a sample payload over here and I'm going to map the schema or I can do it using the advanced properties in a name value pair. Now, once this is done, I'm going to publish this model out. So that's what my, my process is doing it. Once it has been approved, the PO details are sent to a queue as well as topic, which can be then listened by external applications. Now, I've already published this out, so I'm going to go to Work Center. So I'm in my Work Center right now, and I'm going to click on my sample application to invoke the form. I'm going to give it a PO number, PR number. So I'm going to just enter some PR number over here. Submitters department would be IT. Desired date of delivery would be after two days. Delivery location is Orlando. Vendor detail HP. I, I'll just fill in the required fields. Item description, I'll order a monitor. I'll order five of them. Each of them costs $100. For tax, I'm going to say it's $50. Terms of condition leave at door and terms of payment net 30 and go ahead and click submit. Now this kicks off a process. So I'm going to navigate to my task list over here. You can see a process got kicked off. I'm going to work off the process wheel so that you can follow along. So you can see a form was submitted. It is waiting for manager approval. In this case, I've made myself participant of each step so that I don't have to log in and log out. So I'm going to open the form as manager. I can see a read only view and I'm going to go with the happy path, which is approval. I'm going to just say this is approved. And click submit. Now, once this is done, it goes through this path. It sends a message to a queue, send message to a topic and then ends the process. So we are going to go to our Azure environment over here. We are going to drill down into the queue. We are going to use Service Bus Explorer. Now from here, uh, I can send a message, receive a message, peek into a message as well. I'm going to just peek at the message. I'm going to say peek. And as you can see, there is a message over here. And it has all the information which I entered on my form. So 
it has the PO number one which I entered. It is going to be delivered to Orlando. So the whole message has been constructed and kept over here. Similarly, if I go back to my service bus and this time go to topic, drill down into the topic itself, go to service bus explorer. Again, I can do a peek. Select my subscription and click on peak. And there is a message waiting for me, which has the PO number one. So with this, we can see that now an application design and agile point NX can communicate with service bus to send out a message, which can be received by a third party, which is listening to that message queue or topic. Thanks a lot for your time.